<laughs> okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'll be doing a presentation today on improving App Server for WebKit, which is something I've been working on for a while now. Um, it's basically about that WebKit, as used in WebPositive, can be quite slow, as you might know. Uh, uh, on some websites and uh, I looked into what could be done inside App Server to fix that and get a bit better performance out of it. So I'll start with a short introduction where I will um, briefly explain some of the concepts of uh, App Server just to establish the terms. Then I will talk about two things that I worked on, transparency layers, transforms and clipping. Then a few smaller things that I also did which might be interesting and uh, I'll conclude with an outlook basically a few other things that we could do in the future. So I will start with this now. Um, the application model on Haiku, as you know, is a client-server model where uh, applications talk to servers provided by the sy system. The servers are basically applications themselves. But um, this communication is done through a server link, which is basically a way of doing message passing between the application and the servers. So uh, under the hood, this is basically a kernel port. And if you create an application now, and you have a B application object, it will be talking basically to an object called server app in the app server. And if you create a B window with the interface kit, it will be have a mirror basically in the app server, which is called the server window. And the communication is between these things. This one is a bit faded out here because I won't be talking about that today. I will focus on these things because it's all about drawing performance and not about the other stuff that app server also handles. So. I give a very incomplete short overview of uh, some of the components inside App Server, some of the classes, because the interesting thing is a class called Painter that lives in App Server. And uh, as the name implies, it actually does the painting on screen. And that's where lots of the stuff happens that is interesting for drawing performance. So we have, as I said, the server window, which is the thing that gets the messages from the client application. And it's a message looper. It's derived from that. So it just gets the messages and processes them. And then we have a bunch of other classes. There's the class window, which basically represents the window as it is on screen. So the server window is the equivalent of the window in the client side that does message handling. And the window is the actual window on screen. Then there's a thing called a canvas, which used to be called drawing context. I renamed it in my branch to canvas because I think that captures a bit more of what it's supposed to do. It's something uh, you can draw on. Basically, anything in the app server you can do drawing on. Um, it can be a view, which is basically an on-screen view in your application, or it can also be something like an off-screen canvas uh, when you do off-screen drawing by attaching a B view to a B bitmap. The canvas also holds the draw state, which uh, has all the things like the scale, the current colors, and everything uh, that you can set in the B view APIs. And now, getting towards Painter, the next thing is that there's a class drawing engine. And the drawing engine is held by, for example, a window. It's shared by all the views of the window. Um, or it may be hold, uh, held by uh, an off-screen canvas. And the drawing engine is the thing where you can actually give drawing commands like draw a rectangle, draw a circle, or anything. But the drawing engine itself doesn't do the drawing. It's basically another indirection layer, because the actual drawing happens one layer deeper. There's a thing called Painter, and there's a thing called Hardware Interface. The reason for this is that we can do drawing in software. That's what Painter does. It uses the anti-drain geometry library, um, which gives very high quality rendering. It's extremely flexible and uh, can do all the things. But for simple drawing, we might also use 2D hardware acceleration. And that's what happens by hardware interface. It's basically a representation of your graphics card. If you get the frame buffer pointer from it, you can do things like draw a rectangle and similar. So the drawing engine basically decides, do we go here or do we go here when a drawing command comes in, basically uh, based on what it is. Um, to make this a bit more clear, here's a short example. Basically, you want to draw a rectangle, what happens? So you call in your view the fill rect that's still on the client side in the interface kit. And the next thing that happens, it uh, <coughs> comes a message, basically app server fill rect with the rectangle that you want to fill as a payload and ends up in the server window. Um, and the first thing, one of the first things it does is 
it transforms this rectangle. It does a pen to screen transform. As you might know, there are various coordinate systems. There's a screen coordinate system, which is your entire screen. There's a window and a view coordinate system. And there's a pen coordinate system, which also includes the local transformations like scaling and moving the origin. And it transforms basically from this innermost coordinate system to the outermost the screen coordinate. So it knows exactly where on screen in absolute coordinates the rectangle will be. Then it gets the drawing engine from the window. And it tells the drawing engine to fill the rectangle. Here it does clipping now. And then if we look at the raw state, if we look, does the graphics driver have these uh, hooks for hardware acceleration? And then either it will end up the painter and done in software, or you can use the hardware filler here. So that's about the introduction, uh, which is just uh, so you, uh, maybe some of you want to work on it too, and maybe that will help a little to get into it. So now I'll be talk about transparency layers, which is something new that I added to the app server. Uh, first of all, what is it about? Basically, let's say you want to draw a few shapes, like these, on a background. And now you want to add transparency to it. There's two things that you might want to get as a result. You might want to draw the individual shapes with transparency, and then maybe you can see it, maybe not. Uh, they are translucent to each other too. You can sh see the rectangle shine through the other things, for example. Or maybe that's not what you want. What you actually want is you want the whole drawing of the three shapes as they are here with overlapping and get that transparent. But after the overlapping is done, basically that is this, the transparency layer, where you cannot see the circle behind the rectangle. And to do this, you basically have to first draw these things on an intermediate bitmap and then draw that bitmap with alpha mask uh, with a uh, transparency because uh, otherwise you don't get the overlapping right. If you just set the transparency, it will shine through. So uh, we don't, so far, outside of my branch, have support for this in the app server. But WebKit wants to use this and it uses this a lot. So uh, there was a workaround in our WebKit Haiku backend and it works like this. You create a new MTB bitmap and attach a view to it every time a layer is started. Then you draw onto this bitmap, and then you take this bitmap, draw it onto the background at, with added transparency. And that is actually done via uh, clip to picture. So basically, you create the picture, just draw a partially translucent white rectangle into the picture, and use that as a clip to picture mask. And then you throw away the bitmap. This is kind of bad because, uh, as you might know, every time you create a bitmap and attach a view to it, you are spawning a drawing thread inside App Server. So every single time you create a layer, you're spawning a thread. And it's very short lived and then it uh, gets thrown away again. Also, um, also there's another problem. Um, you don't know when you start the layer how large it's going to be. You just get the command start a layer. You don't know how many things will be drawn in there, how large the bitmap, the intermediate bitmap needs to be. So the only thing you can really do is make the bitmap the size of the view, because it could draw anywhere later on, and you need the space then. So in web positive terms, the view is basically the whole browser window size, almost, except the little chrome around it, basically status bar and some buttons above. So you're creating really large bitmaps. The location is not the problem, but you have to clear the bitmaps every time. So you do a large mem set to transparent color. and this. Just this mem set is actually quite visible if you make a profile in the performance and you get all the off-screen window threads. Um, and WebKit likes to use a lot of layers. You can easily, on some websites, scroll around a little and you get, in a very short time, hundreds of layers operations and you get hundreds of threads being spawned. And killed. So this is not really a good workaround, but uh, there's not much better you can do, really, because of the drawing model that we use, where drawing actually happens in the app server itself. So. What we need to do is we need to uh, let App Server know what we are doing. If you can do this in the App Server, the transparency layer, we can make it a bit better, as you will see. So what we do? First, the client says, yeah, start a layer. And then it draws some things. What the App Server now does in the new implementation, it does not actually draw anything at this point. It just writes down the list of operations. It says, yeah, draw a circle, draw a rectangle, draw a triangle, and don't do it yet. Just write it down. In the second step, you still don't draw anything. But the client has now said, yeah, the layer is done, end layer. And the app server looks at this list of operations that it created and 
by looking at the operations and figures out a bounding box, which is basically a rectangle that encloses all of the drawing. It's just an approximate bounding box in this implementation because the exact bounding box can be quite complex depending on the shapes to calculate. Um, in this example, it would be simple, but in general, it is not. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a bit larger than the drawing. It just mustn't be smaller, but uh, by the approximation, we save time here. So now we know how large it will be. So now we create a bitmap inside App Server with the site that we have just figured out that we are going to need. And uh, for that, we use a utility bitmap, which is an App Server internal data structure. It's just a bitmap that is used internally, and it does not need to spawn a thread. We can use it from the existing drawing thread. So uh, by doing this, we are getting rid of the extra drawing thread. So now we draw into the utility bitmap, again using this list. And then we draw the bitmap onto the background. Uh, and we don't use a B picture here for that. Uh, we use an alpha mask, which is something I will get back to later. Just want to mention it here. And then we can throw it away. And that's basically a problem solved, because we do not need to create huge bitmaps anymore that we won't need, and we do not need to spawn threads anymore. And as you might have noticed, basically this, this list of operations, is just a B picture. B picture is just a data structure that uh, lets you contain a list of drawing operations, of B view operations. Uh, so that's basically what I used. The server side equivalent of a B picture is called a server picture. And I added another class, picture bounding box player. It is similar to the normal picture player that draws things, but instead of drawing, it goes through the list of operations and will figure out the bounding box. So by first running this on the list, we have the bounding box, and later we can use the normal picture player and actually draw things. There are quite a bunch of details that are left out here that you need to observe. For example, there's a problem of offset because you uh, need to move basically all the drawing operations into the bitmap. Uh, they can get problems with transforms and clipping in this uh, respect. Uh, you need to observe that the draw state doesn't get broken because you're basically playing back the picture two times now, uh, and you don't want uh, state changes to be applied twice. Uh, there's a problem with the drawing mode because you can't use certain drawing modes anymore, so you need to... Uh, uh, make sure that it's locked to uh, an alpha supporting drawing mode and and some more details but uh, yeah that is uh, those are the details and in the end it works and this is basically the new API that was added it's just two methods you can say begin layer and give the opacity it's just an alpha value and then end layer you can just put these two operations around any other v view drawing operations just wrap them you can also easily nest them any way you like create layers and layers and layers, and it will always do its thing. And it's really much faster if you do it like this instead of the client-side workaround. So that is the layers. Next up is transforms and clipping. First of all, a little look at the transforms that we have in BSR5, which are basically just set origins, set scales, so you can move things around and make them larger or smaller. That's everything we had back then. But in modern applications, such as WebKit, you want a bit more than that. Luckily, uh, many years ago already, Haiku got more than that. It's uh, called a B-affine transform, which is a new thing that wasn't in BOS. If you haven't uh, seen it yet, check it out. Uh, you can basically set affine transforms with, this, with that, which is a mathematical class of transformations, which will basically allow you to do a translation. You can scale, mirror, rotate, and shear. Uh, this is basically the mathematical formulation, but you don't uh, have to touch all those things by hand if you just want to use it. There's convenience factory methods, for example, to do translations, rotation, scaling, cheering, and so on. And you can also, oops, you can also compose transforms like these. So if you have more than one be a fine transform object, you can basically compose them and then have one that includes all the transformations from the individual ones. And there's also methods for this, so you can take your existing transform and add a rotation or add a scaling and so on and so on. So uh, I'm saying this because I'm going to get back to these transforms. For now, I will go to clipping. Uh, again, in R5, we had uh, clipping APIs to types. There's the constraint clipping region, which is a very fast way. You just set a region, and it's very easy to figure out if something is inside the region or not. So uh, this is really fast. 
And there's also a way to set clipping masks by basically supplying a B picture and clipping to whatever's in the picture. However, on R5, this was limited. You only got one bit alpha. So if there's anything at, in a picture at one place, then it was fully opaque. Otherwise, it was fully transparent. In Haiku, luckily, this is not the case. It's not done by me. This is also done already for a while. You get 8-bit uh, alpha. So you can actually use full alpha mask. This is implemented by class alpha mask. I think this was done by Stefan and uh, Adrian. Yeah, right. Um, so just some examples. Have a simple drawing, just five squares, no clipping. Now we do constraint clipping region, basically clip it to a rectangle like this, so it can look like this. And with the uh, mask feature, we can take this and basically use a B picture that contains this. And on Haiku, we get a result looking like this. So you see there's partial transparency. And uh, if you look up close, it also has the nice, uh, the edges preserved. So there's uh, full alpha masking going on. So now there's an interesting interaction between transforms and clipping. Um, inside the drawing pipeline, basically, what get, happens first, as you had seen earlier, it applies the R5 transforms. When you, for example, draw a rectangle, then it will first transform it with scale and origin. Then it will clip later on the drawing command. But th this is not a problem because whenever the app server recalculates the clipping, it applies these transforms to this region as stored internally too. So uh, this is not a problem. Clipping, the old clipping and the old transforms work well together. That's not a problem. However, now if you use one of the new transforms, the BFI transform, they are applied much later. They are applied inside Painter, basically, which does the rasterization. And alpha mass and BFI transforms happen here because that is done by using AGG, which allows it to be really nice and powerful and very great rendering quality. But uh, this means that when you do the clipping here and the transforms in a much later state, the clipping doesn't know anything about these transforms. So the clipping region is not transformed by this. So you do not necessarily get to the results you wanted to have. Here's an example of that. Basically, the old way of doing things, R5 transforms, you can constrain the clipping region, set the scale, and then do the both things, and you will get what you expect, basically a scaled up version of the clipping. Now, if you do that with the new transforms, you get this, which is not what you want to have is this clipping region, but applied to the scaled version because it doesn't know about it. This is a problem also in WebKit rendering. There's some workarounds in there to uh, not make it too bad, but what we really need is a solution for this. Ah, here's another example. Uh, if you do rotation, for example, it will also, of course, uh, this is of course well, actually a bigger problem because uh, if you do a rotation and then set a clipping rectangle, the rectangle after the rotation is not axis aligned anymore. So it's not a, such a rectangle anymore. It's now it's still a rectangle, but it's rotated. So what we need is a new API, one that uh, can do a bunch of things. We want still fast clipping for B regions. So we don't want to give up that. But we also want to allow complex clipping shapes. We want it to be aware of defined transformations so we don't get these ugly uh, uh, wrong drawings. And then there's one more thing which WebKit really likes, and I do think it makes sense. We want the clipping to always be intersecting with itself. So that means you can clip to a rectangle and then call clip to rectangle again to narrow it down further. And you can do it again and again to narrow it down. In the R5 API, you can't do that because you always have to add a state push in between. But it would be nice if you could just do that without having to push the state. So. Um, whoops. Yeah. What I came up with here is this API. There's basically four new methods. Clip to rect, clip to inverse rect, and clip to shape, and clip to inverse shape. Clip to rectangle, as the name applies, uh, sets a clipping rectangle. You can also do the inverse, basically clip out everything except this rectangle. And then there's two other methods to directly clip to be shapes because we all often want to set clipping paths. And currently, we have to use a B picture for that and just draw the shape in there and then use clip to picture. But we can save time here if we could directly set a clipping path that is B shape. Uh, these APIs work with the affine transforms. They automatically select between the fast region clipping and alpha masks, preferring the regions which are faster than possible. Um, so for example, if you use clip to rect, but there's a rotation transformation, then it will automatically uh, see that and uh, use an alpha mask internally because it's not uh, an axis aligned rectangle anymore. 
can directly clip to a shape. There's a inverse variants. They're always intersecting, so you can call them together in any order you like. They can be freely mixed and uh, narrow down your clipping in any ways. So a bit about the internal implementation. This is basically how the alpha masks uh, used to be implemented, um, uh, which was, uh, as I said, done <coughs> earlier. And uh, there's basically, by used by Painter, there's an alpha mask as part of the draw state internally. And two of the interesting things that it has is uh, the server picture, which is the B picture, and basically the alpha bitmap, basically like the grayscale bitmap that was visible earlier. Um, this is how it looked before. This is how it looks now. Um, what I did mainly is to uh, uncouple the alpha masks themselves from their source. So uh, before, an alpha mask was always using the picture, but we wanted to be more flexible now. So there's now basically three kinds of masks. This is just an uh, abstract class now. And there's a uniform mask, a shape mask, and a picture mask. The picture mask is like the old one. It has a server picture. The shape mask is based on the B shape. And the uniform mask just has the same opacity value everywhere. You can use it. It's, it's used by the transparency layers. Um, and the bitmap is still here. Um, and of course, since we earlier had this nice thing, picture of bounding box player, we can do another nice thing. Uh, we don't have to create the alpha mask at view size anymore, always, which was always done before. But we can also use this here again to figure out how large is the mask going to be. If we have a view that is like this, but uh, just want to clip to a little rectangle like this, then we will know that. And we don't have to create the mask any larger than necessary. Also, it's now independent of use size and view origin, basically. We only have to retouch the buffer. Um, before, whenever basically view size or origin changed, um, you had to re-render the masks. So there were a lot of re-renderings going on. That's not necessary anymore. And when you stack alpha masks on top of each other, uh, they will intersect the bounding boxes. Because when you narrow down the clipping, it can always only get smaller, the alpha mask. So if you use the new APIs and send a transform, and then you clip to rect, you get this result. So this is, I guess, what you expect when you do this. So it does the uh, clipping in the transform coordinate space. So I added that to uh, App Server and the WebKit backend as well. A few more smaller things. Um, one smaller thing that I did is in um, painting bitmaps. Um, of course, Painter itself uses AGG. But it also, for many dropping operations, has further optimized versions, which are not using AGG directly, but uh, uh, which are optimized for one special case, because AGG is always very generic. So you get uh, sometimes code that is not as fast as could be for a special case. And depending on all these kinds of questions, uh, when drawing bitmaps, there's quite a bunch of optimized versions inside App Server. And um, uh, so you can get faster bitmap drawing. But what I found by profiling is that some of the um, cases that WebKit likes to use are not implemented as an optimized version. So I added two new optimized paths for basically B op copy with alpha mask and B linear scaling with pixel alpha overlay. And uh, by adding optimized paths for these, um, I could see that bitmap drawing performance went up a bit. And I, while I was at it, I always refa also refactored it a bit, a bit. Basically, I extracted the bitmap painting from the painter. The painter is a quite, quite huge class already. So I didn't want to make it any bigger, so I extracted that from there. Another thing I did is in drawing modes. For example, there's all these, maybe you know from the B-Book, there's all these drawing modes, basically. You can do pixel composite or pixel overlay, and so on and so on. And uh, what happens internally, there's a class called pixel format, and it selects function pointers for blending stuff. Uh, based on these uh, drawing modes and based on whether there's a fill pattern and so on and so on. And there's a lot of these mode implementations already, but I added uh, a new one for the mode pixel alpha composite with no pattern. And that alone gave a considerable speed up. So um, basically, sometimes you don't need to do large things. Sometimes a small thing can make a large difference. Um, because before, for this mode, Pixel Alpha Composite, which is the most complete composite mode that the app server has, it didn't. Uh, it used to not be used much because it's, of course, slower. But WebKit uses it a lot. And when you use a solid fill color, so no of these pixel stipple patterns for filling, 
um, then it's of course much faster to just fill directly with this color and not uh, look at this pattern every single time for every single pixel. You could really see it in the profile, how just figuring out that pattern uh, used up CPU cycles. Of course, these little things can be hard to find. So my recommendation, if you want to do this kind of work, always use our profiler. It's really great. Um, small things can make a huge difference, but uh, you have to see where they are. Performance is often non-intuitive. So I do recommend that you use this if you haven't before. It's a great tool. So I think it's time for a short demo. Uh, if the network connectivity allows, I want to just oops, show what um, web positive uh, looks like. This is, uh, for now, the old web positive. As you know it, this is a non-optimized normal version. I will see if I have any connectivity here. Basically, I will open this, which you, something you might have seen before. So yeah, this is video. And we'll wait a second before so that the page finishes. This is not slow web positive, this is slow network. <laughs> so and as you can see, uh, it's a bit slow here. And if I scroll around, maybe you notice that it's lagging quite a lot. I mean, uh, when, when I do this here, I feel that there's quite a delay between uh, uh, pushing the scroll wheel and actually uh, it happening. So it's kind of slow here. That is a good example here on YouTube of uh, the problems with the uh, transparency layers, for example, or with the uh, other things. So now I will boot into a, another installation on this machine. So now that our network <coughs> should work, let's try this again. <coughs> Right, it's working, great. So, and now we have the same video here again, and now I can scroll around, and maybe you notice that it's reacting quickly, and it's not, and the video is uh, still playing fine while I scrolled around, and uh, there's not these <coughs> big delays anymore. So that's the kind of difference you get, uh, for example, from the transparency layers. That ex really makes a difference bet between the old and the new. From all the things I did, the transparency layers were really the biggest one. So uh, there's another little thing that I can show about performance. This is just raw drawing performance, not influenced by the transparency layers. But uh, here it you can uh, then see that it's also uh, better on, on that kind of thing. I will just put this here. And uh, these on the right are results from this little benchmark that I made on the uh, normal old build. Um, and I will just start this. And then you can see that some of the operations are quite a bit faster now. Uh, I leave this running. By the way, a few of these, especially in the later tests, uh, are drawn somewhat wrong, but that is not new. That's bugs you already had before. Need to fix them. But as you can see, in some cases here, like rectangle filling 3.2 versus 15.4, uh, basically adding these new drawing modes to optimize for what WebKit actually uses in the drawing modes really helps a lot. So you don't have to. Uh, uh, use the most generic version in everything anymore. Of course, this is uh, still not the performance that we would like to have. There's still a lot that needs to be done. Um, especially in the department, as you can see here, of bitmap drawing. That's uh, one thing where we really need, uh, especially when it comes together with alpha masks. This is one that gets drawn wrong, by the way. Uh, if it's with alpha mask and alpha composites, then bitmap drawing is way too slow still. So last one. So yeah, the overall score is a bit better, because uh, but some of the individual tests especially are much better. Many stayed the same, but uh, this is basically where it's going, and it's helping quite a lot already. So I will open this again here.
right, that was this. And uh, I'll conclude, short outlook. Just a small list of ideas, some further things that could be done. If anyone is interested, I'm always uh, looking forward to that. Um, one larger thing that could help a lot, especially with compositing, would be to implement support for what's called pre-multiplied alpha. It's basically a different way to represent alpha uh, bitmaps with an alpha channel. Um, the advantage of this is that once you have your bitmaps in this format, you can compose them together much faster than the normal representation. However, adding this is not uh, that simple. We have to think through to make it properly, to not just hack it in there. Uh, for example, if you use pre-multiplied alpha, you can't just use uh, normal linear RGB with 8-bit per color channel because you'd get too much precision loss. Um, and we use that kind of thing everywhere in app server, so we had would have to reconsider things a little. Another thing, of course, is SIMD, which is one of the things I think I will look into next. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can be accelerated by using SSE, for example. Instruction sets. We already use SSE in one place, which is the uh, bilinear bitmap scaling, but there are many other places, uh, especially in compositing, that could profit from this. There's a few things about caching that could be done. For example, on some websites, WebKit uses the same shape as an alpha mask in many, many different places. And that, of course, ends up uh, recalculating the same alpha masks all over again. And we could, if we could cache it somehow inside, alpha, uh, inside App Server, we could save a lot of time. And the same is true for scaled bitmaps. Sometimes it's, you have some kind of design element or icon on the website, and it's in many places and always scaled. And we do that again and again and again. I instead, we could maybe cache the scaled version and just you reuse it so we don't have to scale again. There's a lot of refactoring that can be done. For example, in Painter, it's a pretty large class. We can extract more things from it. I've extracted the bitmap painting, but more things can be done. Uh, the transforms and clipping, where we have the old and new IPIs, would be nice if that could be unified. Basically, I think the old uh, APIs could maybe implement it in terms of the new ones, although that might give problems with backwards compatibility. So I'm not entirely sure that it's possible, but uh, it would certainly be nice. And one last thing is we should definitely get this thing under unit test coverage because that would help a lot with improving it. Uh, sometimes you make a small change and it breaks some kind of drawing in some subtle way and then you don't notice it and only much later. Uh, it would really help a lot if we had lots of unit tests and I don't mean these test applications that we already have. There's little test applications that you can run and then click manually to compare the results but uh, automated proper unit tests uh, I mean, it's not often not the most enjoyable work to write these, but it's really, really worth it. And it's uh, one of the things that I also plan to do. So that's it. Uh, thank you all for your attention. And if there are any questions, I would be ready to try and answer them. Yeah. I, uh, want to basically get it into a merchable state, uh, hope this be guided, and hope by the end of it to hopefully have it merged. So. And that, um, um, are there any uh, use case for things like um, calling, um, uh, setting um, transform, clipping, and setting another transform and another clipping um, stacking stuff like this, or <coughs> I suppose it, it will make things much more complex to handle. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that there's uh, such a use case there. It's ac at least it's not something I've seen <coughs> from uh, from actual usage. Mm -hmm. What kind of caching strategies have you got in the app server? Uh, currently. Um, Currently, I don't think there's much uh, done in catching at all. Uh, I, I guess you mean it in relation to this year? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not done yet. Uh, one idea, for example, for the scale bitmaps would be to s just say we reserve a certain fixed amount of space or uh, as maximum space, maybe just four megabytes or so, because this is mostly interesting for small things. Yeah. And then we just uh, make it the most recent to use or something like that. A uh, very simple strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would work best instead of something really complex here. So, that, that <coughs> so you'd need effectively cache developing that you can then imp you 
then test and then you use. So yeah. it's a lot. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing is that uh, the bitmaps uh, on the client side are V bitmaps, and there's a mirror of them again in the app server which holds the actual bitmap, and uh, so <coughs> we can just store as part of the app server's bitmap data structure cached versions of it which are scaled, so yeah. uh, it wouldn't be that hard to implement it. Mm. Okay, no more questions, then yeah, thank you again.